So chapter 12. Earth, moon, and sun interactions, if you really want to break this down. What are we going to learn about? Eclipses, solstices, equinoxes, and seasons, space exploration, technology, aliens, all that stuff. This is our last astronomy unit. We have been looking up at the stars for thousands and thousands of years. We have been. It's not a coincidence that on a clear night when you're sitting around a campfire or even when you're walking outside, you enjoy looking up. It's part of us. What are some ancient uses of astronomy? Well, the first thing that we used to do was we used to keep track of the seasons. You're right. It, that was hugely important. When to plant, when to harvest, when to hunt. So even before we were planting, when we were still uh, chasing animals, you need to know, for example, when caribou herds were migrating, when, they were, when, when there was going to be good hunting. When natural events such as floods would occur. Hey, when the weather gets warmer, rivers get higher because snow melts. Second, calendars. Calendars. By the way, we have kind of a stupid calendar. How many months are there in a year? Hmm. How many days are there in a year? So if I go 365 divided by 12, as times, Mr. 365 divided by 12, I get an average month that should be 30.4 days, which is really kind of yucky, kind of yucky, kind of icky. First of all, how many days are there in a week? So it'd be kind of nice if we could build something around, sorry, seven times 28, seven times four weeks, around 28 days. If I go 365 divided by 28 days, if we had each month be 28 days, you know how many months really make sense? It's almost bang on 13. If you go 13 times 28, you get a 364 day year. And then you would have one day left over, that would be New Year's Day. That would be the day for the celebration. It makes way more sense. The native Canadians and other natives have had a 13 month calendar. We're locked into a 12 month calendar. You don't realize actually how much money that costs our society in terms of bookkeeping. The fact that different months have different lengths means if you're a business, it's very difficult, for example, for you to compare sales in May to sales in February because they're different lengths. There have been companies that have tried to go with a 13-month calendar and every month has 28 days, which means the first day of every month is a Monday. Every month. It'd be kind of handy because if you wanted Sierra to know uh, five years from now on July 16th, what day of the month is it? You could calculate it very easily because the first is a Monday. You just count your way there. I kind of think we should go to a 13-month calendar. 28 days each. What's that you say? The 13 months should be named Duick? I would go with that too. I'd be okay with that. But even if not, I'd be perfectly fine with a 13 month calendar. So Native Canadians had a 13 month calendar based on the lunar cycle because the loon, the, the loon, the moon uh, waxes and wanes, goes from full moon to new moon every 28 days. That's its cycle. So why 13 months? 28 days? Four weeks times 13 months is 364 days, just one short of the actual year. Makes way more sense to me. But that's never going to change. We're stuck with it. What else did they use astronomy for? Navigation. Big time. Mariners sailing in the open ocean used Polaris, the North Star and other constellations to get their bearings. Put your pencils down. So hunters, sailors, etc., that use traditional methods can tell where they are on land by looking at the sky and using the location of the stars and constellations and the time of year like a map. Some pictures for you. So this is from China. This temple was used to measure the length of a year. It was accurate to within 26 seconds 
and they made it even 300 years before Europeans managed to do it. It used shadows and things to measure the length of a year. This is the Bighorn Medicine Wheel in Wyoming. So during the summer, three of the different big stacks of rocks, there's one, there's one, uh, they line up with the dawn rising of three important stars from Cheyenne mythology. Uh, in Newgrange, Ireland, there is this building here. For 17 minutes on either side of the winter solstice, the longest day of the year, the light shines through a gap and it illuminates the chamber inside. The light moves towards the back of the chamber and forward again. It was built about 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago, it would have reached the very back of the chamber. Now it stops about two meters short of the back wall. And this is due to the fact that the Earth's tilt has changed ever so slightly over 5,000 years. Uh, this is from Peru. There are 13 regularly spaced towers built on the side of a ridge. From buildings at either end, you can see the sunrise and the sunset in gaps between the towers, with the sunrise moving back and forth across the whole structure in a year. So we suspect maybe this was an ancient calendar. We're not sure, but it certainly could be. So, ancient theories of the solar system. At one point, people thought the sun and the stars revolved around the Earth. We used to think that the Earth stood still and everything revolved around it, that the Earth was the center of the universe. This was called the geocentric model, geo earth centric centered. We believed this for a long time. Well, Trevor, it makes sense. It sure does look like the sun moves around us. It sure does look like the moon moves around us. Why? It, it was a perfectly valid theory. Uh, it didn't match other observations. In particular, Nicholas, Cap yeah, some of the door, give me one second. We'll pause the video here. So Nicholas Copernicus realized in the 1500s that a sun-centered model made way more mathematical sense. What's the word for sun-centered? Hang on one second again, another interruption. Wow. So what do we call a sun-centered? Sun-centered is called heliocentric. Helio means sun. In fact, it's where the word helium comes from. The first time that we found helium was looking through a spectroscope at the sun. We said, there's an element there we don't realize. It's the sun element. We didn't know helium was on the Earth, too. Galileo confirmed this via his telescopes. Again, if you look at Jupiter through a good pair of binoculars, you will see four little dots around Jupiter. And holy smokes, those are the moons of Jupiter. You know what? If moons go around Jupiter, maybe everything, in fact, everything doesn't go around the Earth because there's stuff going around Jupiter. Da! Da! Okay, fine. The moon. The brightest object in the night sky. So the moon... orbits the Earth. The same side always faces us. It's the near side of the moon. So we only know what the other side of the moon looks like from satellites. Does the moon give off light of its own? What does it do then? Where does, why is it so bright? What are we actually seeing? Okay, it reflects light from the sun. So whenever you're looking at the moon, what you're seeing is the portion of the moon that is facing the sun. You've heard the term dark side of the moon. Is there really a dark side of the moon? No, that part also gets sun. 
In particular, when there's a new moon, when we don't see a moon, that just means that part of this moon is not facing the sun. The back side of the moon is facing the sun. The real question is, why do we only see one side of the moon? If the moon is spinning, and it is, why do you only see one side? Well, it turns out it's spinning at exactly the same rate as it's moving around the Earth. Uh, you know what? Put your pencils down. Look up. <laughs>